Can you all hear me? Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm really excited to be here just going to kick off this wonderful new space. I want to thank Dennis and uh, Fairly Community Arts uh, for making this possible. And of course, DC for providing this uh, wonderful uh, chickering piano here. I was up here when the building was first done uh, last summer, and I said, oh, if only we had a piano. And then it just appeared. So uh, hopefully this is the beginning of uh, some wonderful concerts. If you're uh, new to Classicopia, we're now on our 20th year of doing concerts in the Upper Valley area, uh, based out of the Hanover, uh, New Hampshire area. But uh, we've traveled sort of anywhere within a couple of hour radius, uh, doing wonderful chamber music concerts of all kinds, with all types of instruments. Um, and uh, this, uh, this program is a really fun uh, connection between the classical idiom and the jazz uh, idiom, and so we call it jazzical. Uh, it's not always easy to put those uh, two, two ideas together. Classical music really sort of has to be written out so that we can all follow and be together. Jazz has to have this feeling of improvisation and freedom, uh, and uh, there are only a few people who are really able to sort of uh, bridge that gap and do it well. Uh, and to help me in this enterprise, I have two uh, wonderful musicians. Uh, making his first appearance on a classical music concert is wonderful bass player Craig Sandberg, who we'll meet in a minute. Uh, Craig actually came up from Asheville, North Carolina, uh, which is where I actually moved after I left Vermont uh, 10 years ago. And I started a series down in Asheville. And so we did this same concert there. We had a great time. And he decided, sure, I'll drive up to Vermont. Uh, and uh, he did make a stop in New York to visit his brother. But uh, it's great that Craig could come up. And on violin and on viola, uh, one of the fluency he's going to play is viola. Uh, one of our uh, favorite colleagues who's been up here probably more than anybody with Classicopia, Mr. Tim Schwartz. Uh, he and I had gone to a Peabody Conservatory together way too many years back. Uh, we had fallen in love together with kind of American music, we began to play lots of American music, especially kind of lost American tonal music, jazz music from the early part of the 20th century. Uh, and we actually formed, right around that time I had moved to this area, and we formed together the Upper Valley Duo, uh, which was a duo uh, sort of a d dedicated to that, playing that kind of music at several concerts in the area and across the country. And then we were fortunate enough to win uh, the big uh, U.S. State Department Artistic Ambassador Program in 1995, and were sent on a two-month tour of the Middle East and Southeast Asia performing American music uh, to a wide variety of audiences in really incredible places, including Syria. We were in Aleppo, Syria, before it was uh, disappeared. Um, Pakistan and Egypt and Bangladesh and Thailand. Uh, and everywhere we went, uh, we would bring this American music. And, uh, it was just wonderful to see people in Bangladesh whistling the tunes to West Side Story. Uh, so uh, this is music that uh, transcends all, all, all boundaries and all cultures. Uh, and what we're really going to focus on uh, in this program is one particular piece. It's a very long piece by uh, the great uh, jazz, French jazz pianist Claude Bolling, uh, most famous in America for his uh, suite for flute and uh, jazz piano that he did with Jean-Pierre Rampal in 1975. That actually uh, stayed on the Billboard Top 40 list for, I believe, 530 weeks in a row. That's over 10 years. Uh, it was such a popular piece of music uh, that most people don't even realize he wrote several other suites. He followed that up uh, a couple of years later with this suite for violin that he wrote for Pinkus Zuckerman. Uh, a few years later, he did one for trumpet with Maurice Andre. Yo-Yo Ma has a cello suite that came out in 1985. All of them sort of uh, great uh, connections between uh, really virtuosic classical playing and jazz. Uh, but to me, it's really great chamber music, the way that the instruments have dialogues and conversations. It's just as good as uh, some of the Beethoven and Mozart pieces we play. Uh, this suite would last about 50 minutes if we did it all at one time. So what we're going to do is break it up into parts. We're going to do the first five on the first half. Uh, and then we will uh, conclude the program uh, with the last three movements. And in between, we're going to do a couple other great composers who bridge that, uh, the gap between classical jazz. George Gershwin, probably the first great to do that. Leonard Bernstein with the wonderful version of West Side Story. And then an African-American composer, William Grant Still, who does not get enough credit uh, for also sort of finding connections between blues and boogie-woogie and the classical uh, music. So, uh, Claude Bowling himself was uh, very well known in Paris as a great jazz pianist, born in 1930. Uh, so he's pretty old right now, I believe. He's still alive and living in Paris. Uh, and he uh, lived out in Nice uh, during the war for most of the war. But then uh, when he was 16 years old, he gets back to Paris right after the war ends. And he starts his own band there, known as Les Parisiens. Uh, and uh, they do a lot of uh, ragtime, bebop, and New Orleans jazz. Uh, and that's, of course, very popular in Paris at this time. 
he becomes uh, friends with um, uh, Oscar Peterson, with Duke Ellington. He sort of becomes the protege to Duke Ellington. Um, and uh, he uh, lo loved Fats Waller, the old stride style on the piano. Um, he then uh, uh, did uh, films, wrote a lot of uh, scores for films, over 100 films he wrote music for, including uh, To Catch a Spy, California Sweet. Um, but it really was not until uh, 1975 when he wrote that uh, suite for the flute uh, that his name began to carry into America. And I can remember as a young kid, classically trained, listening to that piece of music and thinking, ah, I, that is great stuff. And my mom got me the music to play along with, uh, with the record, so I could pretend I was really playing jazz. Uh, and it really is uh, wonderful to be able to, to read that music, but to make it sound so free uh, and improvisatory. So I hope you enjoy this. Uh, we're going to do the first five movements. And first, we have a romance, a beautiful lyrical start. The second movement, a caprice, uh, where uh, Tim has a big virtuosic uh, intro that sounds a little bit like Bach. Uh, Claude Bullen really loved Bach, as many jazz people do. Then we have a gavotte, again linked to Bach in the counterpoint between instruments. The fourth movement is a tango, <coughs> and for that, uh, Tim is going to take out the viola, and there's a wonderful dialogue, a pizzicato dialogue between the viola and the bass on that. And then we'll finish the first half with a Slavonic dance, kind of rip-roaring back and forth between the classical and the different jazz idioms in that. Uh, so please put your hands together and welcome our featured artist here, Craig Sandberg on bass. And Tim